So welcome back. Uh, we are now going to run through uh, the V-Ray material, the standard V-Ray material that, uh, that does pretty much uh, anything you could imagine. Um, it's, it's We're just going to go through pretty much how it works. Um, and then in a later video, we're going to uh, go ahead and set up uh, some, some nice shaders uh, to mimic whatever it is that we uh, come up with uh, wanting to render. So uh, I have this scene with a bit of a weird object that I created. Um, there's a, uh, a plane underneath it and there's two rectangular lights um, and that should be plenty for what it is that we're doing now. Uh, so yeah, just to illustrate what we're doing. To further illustrate this, I want to use the IPR render. Uh, which will render on the GPU, um, just so that you can see uh, the changes I'm doing as I'm doing them. Uh, that should make understanding all of this stuff a lot easier. Um, but I'm on a laptop, so it's not going to fly through it, but I hope it's uh, it's good enough for uh, for you to take something away from, uh, from this video. All right, so... I've uh, attached this V-Ray material um, as, as it is um, and uh, we'll just start at the top. We have uh, our diffuse color which works like diffuse color in pretty much any render. Um, you can attach whatever uh, a bitmap file or um, a, uh, a procedural shader to it. Um, as you would in any other other render. We also have an amount, uh, which is pretty much a, much a multiplier for the texture, uh, which can be a nice way of controlling stuff without having to color correct your uh, images and all that. And opacity map works like opacity maps tend to work, just making stuff transparent. Um, not the most useful in the world. Uh, and roughness is actually quite nice. It will soften out um, the diffuse lighting, so basically it looks like there's a bit of roughness in your material. Um, you can see up here in the uh, sample preview that it's it's pretty much just uh, yeah softening everything out. I like to keep a bit of this guy this guy on, uh, and self illumination is self illumination, so that should all be. Uh, something everyone knows uh, or at least you do now so um, we're going to move on to reflections so I am going to dial this down to almost black uh, just because reflections are easier to see that way we've got these BRDF types uh, Fong, Blend and Award and they do tend to act a little bit differently all of them um, but you can get pretty much the same result with all of them uh, I tend to to leave it at blend, but for some like shiny material materials, uh, Ward just does a better job, and I don't know the ins and outs of, of uh, why why that is. So reflection color, um, basically the amount of reflection, but as an RGB value, so you can you can tint it if you want to have purple reflections or magenta, whatever this is, um, or you can input a, a texture map which I am a big fan of doing. I, I hate when stuff is too clean, so I always kind of want to break it up. Um, so this is probably a bit too severe, but uh, I can find something that just breaks it up a little bit. So we just have a bit of dirt and mush and whatever in there. Um, that's just something I like doing. Uh, and then again we have the multiplier for this. And actually for now I'm just going to turn this off just not in, in order not to confuse ourselves. Um, reflection exit color, uh, don't worry about that, just make sure you have enough uh, bounces in your light or in your reflections. Next up we have uh, 
a checkbox that will let us lock or unlock um, glossiness or highlights and the glossiness uh, between the highlights and reflections. Uh, glossiness is, as you can see here, if I uncheck that so I can dial down, down glossiness, it's, uh, it's, it's what we used to call specular. So it's not a reflection of anything per se, it's, it's just the specular value. Um, and it, it, it is actually really useful uh, every once in a while to uh, just have a look at what you can what you can do using just this uh, instead of trying to say for example something like this like it's really soft reflections that are very uh, heavy to render uh, you can just get away usually with uh, using highlights instead of reflections so that's what you can get out of unlocking these two guys Reflection glossiness, again, further down, you take that, the less glossy it's going to be, so the more blurry. And that too benefits heavily from, uh, let's just put a noise in there, from having a, a texture. Um, just don't forget that some textures you need to say alpha is luminance on, as such. We see now, again, while this is pretty severe, it's uh, it's breaking up, um, it's breaking up the reflections uh, in in a way that's not too CG. Uh, always put textures everywhere you can. So, I'll just break that again. Reflection glossiness, clean and simple. Uh, let me just dial this down because these reflections are way too bright. A um, bit glossier. And next we have the reflection subdivisions, uh, much like uh, on the lights. Uh, if you feel like your uh, reflections are uh, too noisy, you can you can turn up your uh, reflection subdivs, and we'll just basically sample it more, um, and that. It takes more time, but it uh, makes sure stuff looks look better. Use interpolation, we're not going to look at here, um, but that's a, a way of rendering quicker uh, reflections, but uh, they tend to uh, be a little bit um, all over the place, to be honest. So we'll probably look at that at some point later. Use Fresnel. Uh, Fresnel is on everything. We love it. Basically, depend, depending on the angle that you're looking at the object, it will change how reflective it is. So, so it'll just make stuff like unless it's pure chrome, uh, you pretty much want to put Fresnel on. Uh, right now, it's locked to the same index of refraction as uh, your refraction. But if we uncheck that, we can just go ahead and tweak it. Um, even shiny metal will just have a really high index of, of refraction for Fresnel, but Fresnel will be on. Um, so, so yeah, always put that on. Trace reflections. If I turn that off, we only get our specular highlights uh, that I was talking about before. Uh, there's one other thing we get, and that's incredible speed. Um, so, sometimes. If, if you are just blurring your reflections, um, it makes sense to do that. Uh, max depth is how many uh, bounces um, a, a ray will bounce around in reflections. So if you have like two mirrors, it will hit it once, twice, bum, 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 to until you get to this amount, and then will come out black. Um, so. Uh, if you have a very intricate scene, you need to probably need to up this, but uh, very often somewhere between 5 and 10 is uh, more than enough, uh, or at least enough. Reflect on backside. Uh, if you have a, like, it basically it just means that it will reflect on the opposite of the normal as well. So if you have like a plane, it will reflect on both sides. Soften edge and fix dark edges. I've never found any proper use for that. Um, as long as you're just uh, making sure your anti-aliasing and sampling is set uh, correctly. Dim distance. 
is interesting. I'm actually not sure if it works in the IPR. It does. Um, it will allow you to set how far reflection rays should go. Let me just see if I can find. See, now we're not getting the whole floor, we're just getting like 10 units away. And this fall off will basically, if it's a one, it's going to be completely soft. And if it's at zero, it's going to be a sharp fall off at uh, that distance. It can be very, very useful. Uh, it will speed up your renders a lot. Uh, and uh, you can avoid getting weird uh, reflections of stuff that's kind of outside of camera and, and, and just all over the place. So it's a good way sometimes to just make sure uh, that, that you're controlling what it is that's being reflected. Um, and, oops, sorry, not that. Let's just uh, get some more. Boom. Uh, and turn this off. So, give me a second here. Uh, anisotropy, anisotropic, I don't know how that's pronounced, but um, basically it, it means that we're kind of smearing our reflections in a direction, and it is uh, lovely. If you look at it, now you can see that we're kind of yeah, smearing the reflection along uh, this direction or up and down and you can rotate the direction down here again that's one of those things that um, it, it does actually add some render time but but it just makes stuff like metal look so much more believable even if you're just using like small amounts um, because hardly, again, hardly ever, uh, anything in this world is completely reflective and gives us perfect reflections. Um, so let's take this guy off and go further down to refractions. Yes, um, basically, it's like when rendering glass, uh, we're rendering the refraction. Uh, of a transparent object that has a, an index of refraction here. Uh, something like that. Um, again, you can look this stuff up on the internet, like what values will represent what. Uh, not the prettiest thing in the world. Let's just up the depth. Um, it's actually not doing that in the IPR, but that's again, that's how many bounces around it'll, it'll do. Uh, you can set a refraction color. Again, like the reflection colors, you can tint it, um, which is a simple way of adding color to your, oh, sorry, to your uh, refractions. And again, you have your amount, so you can dial it down. Uh, but if you actually really want to control the color, I love using the fog color. But uh, let's just step through this in the right order. Uh, we have refraction glossiness. So frosted glass, beer, what have you. Uh, this is the place you want to be. Something like that. Um, again, these are not too quick to render, uh, but uh, most anything will have some sort of uh, not perfect glossiness in there. Um, so so uh, play around with that until you find something you like. And you have your subdivisions, again, just to clean up uh, your render quality. Your index of refraction, we just said that before. Uh, let's try something different. That looks interesting. And the fog color, which I love, because it's kind of like tinting your reflect your refraction, but it what it does is, is it mimics uh, there being a fog inside of your object. So the thinner your object gets, let's see if we can, uh, the more that will shine through. So let's just see if I can actually get this to behave. 
Got a multiplier down here for it as well. Whoops. Um, so basically it just gives you a nicer variation of coloring. I'm just on the wrong side here of my light. Um, you see that like the thicker whatever's inside the volume is, the darker it will get, and then when it's thinner it will uh, take on the color. And that just means that again, stuff will look a lot cooler. Um, and considering what it's doing, it's it's really not that slow to render. I just get light behind it. So that's my preferred way of uh, of, of coloring uh, of coloring a refraction. Uh, Fog bias. We're going to get into this in a more advanced video. Um, don't worry too much about that yet. Um, we can turn off whether or not we want to ray trace these guys, and it doesn't really make sense to turn it off because that just does nothing. Uh, we have our maximum depth. Uh, how many times the ray will bounce around before it goes black. And we have effect shadows. See, if you look down here, this purple magenta -ish color is spilling down into the shadow just a bit, uh, which it will stop doing if I uncheck this. So basically your shadows will will pass through the refractive object and, and cast colored shadows. That's kind of mimicking um, what you'd get from uh, caustics, but without really doing it. So, uh, poor man's caustics, I guess. Uh, and we get into arbitrary channels a bit later, but you can actually have the refraction propagate through uh, just a color, the color in alpha, or all your channels. So if you do say a, uh, um, a RGB pass of something that you uh, want to pass off to a compositor, the value of the RGB thing will actually scatter through and, and everything will behave nicely. And again, that's uh, definitely something for a later video. Then we have dispersion. I have never rendered anything with this on, but it is horribly cool. Basically, uh, when you pass light through something, it's going to uh, hit all these uh, uh, light has these different wavelengths and depending on uh, the color of the light it's gonna uh, have a different uh, index of refraction because of the wavelengths I think you have to be like it's a science thing um, but what that means is that with dispersion turned on you get that really nice crystal uh, crystal glass diamond thing where, where you're your light actually gets this, or your refraction gets this, gets this uh, rainbow effect. Um, but it is horribly slow to render. It just looks amazing. Um, so for still images, by all all means, try it out. Uh, but it is, uh, it can be a little bit painful. Um, so that is our refractions. So let's just uh, go back and give him a bit of color. Oh, that's reflection, but we do want some of that as well. But maybe not so much. Yeah, just a tad. Should be all good. So, <clears throat> that's just really quickly running you through refraction. Next up, we have bump maps. Uh, gotta love these guys. Um, add whatever texture you want in there. Uh, let's just do a fractal. And we get bump maps. Um, it's really not that much to be said about it. Uh, you do want to uh, take care of your bump or pay attention to your bump multiplier, um, depending on the scene size. Uh, this is in uh, units, I think. Um, so if your scene size is very big, your bump has to be pretty big as well. Um, so just uh, just bear that in mind. Um, bump shadows will... We have soft shadows here, so it's pretty hard to see. But the shadows cast from the object that has the shader on will actually change depending on the bump map. So you can get kind of like a non-perfect shadow 
which is which is cool. Um, and in case you really need it, you might be better off using displacements, but it, it can add a little bit uh, to your scene. But that's uh, yeah, bump maps uh, when you use them within the V-Ray material. There's a bump map shader that we're going to look into as well, but uh, but for all intents and purposes, this is uh, this is pretty good. So with all that being said and done. I'm not going to touch subsurface scattering inside of the V-Ray material because I think it's, uh, I want, don't want to be harsh and say useless, but it just, compared to, to using a blend shader and the subsurface scattering uh, shader, it's it's so hard to control, so, so we're actually going to leave that at that. And uh, that brings us to... Well, I guess having uh, we, we've gone through all the uh, per parameters of the uh, V-Ray material. I'm sorry if I'm a bit uh, if there's a bit of noise here. Uh, it's just a train running by outside. So um, it shouldn't be too much uh, stuff surprising you because it is very close to what it is in in, in a lot of other packages. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that you. you you've seen all the parameters that we need to change. And we got to play with the IPR render as well. So thank you for listening. And uh, go ahead uh, to renderschool.com and sign up for the newsletter letter if you uh, want to be notified whenever there's new videos and stuff coming out. Um, so I appreciate you uh, taking your time to, uh, to listen to all this stuff. Cheers. <laughs>